morning, guys. Today we're going to learn a little bit about the weighted average cost of capital. But first, I want you to all imagine yourselves as a CEO of a firm. Okay? So you need money in order to do business. So you need capital. And where do you get this capital from? Well, you can get it from one of two ways. You can borrow your money, or you can get it from owner's contribution. So debt or equity. Let's say, let's imagine you get 100% of your capital from borrowing money. So the cost of your capital in that scenario would equal the interest rate on those loans. So let's say the interest rate's about 5%. Your cost of capital is equal to 5%. Now let's imagine your company gets 100% of its capital through owner's contributions, okay? And let's say owners require a 10% rate of return on their investments. So your cost of capital in that scenario is gonna equal 10%. But let's say you're like a normal US company and you receive some capital from debt and some from equity. Is your cost of capital gonna be equal to 5% or 10%? Well, you know logically it's probably gonna equal something in between, but, but you don't know exactly what it's gonna equal. Well, that's where the weighted average cost of capital comes in. So I know you guys have heard the term cost of capital a lot in the, in the following weeks, but um, in the past weeks, but we wanna actually flush out what that term means because it's gonna be really important to understand what cost of capital is for you to make that jump from cost of capital to weighted average cost of capital. So the cost of capital is the opportunity cost of all capital invested in an enterprise. So let's break that down a little more. The opportunity cost. Well, the opportunity cost is what you give up when you choose one option over another, basically. So let's say I have the option of investing in project A or project B. I can't invest in both, I need to invest in one. Well, my opportunity cost of investing in project A will be the return I would have gotten when I invested in project B, okay? Okay, so then there's that all capital invested portion. And this is just talking about the total amount of cash in a business. And then in an enterprise. So this is referring to the opportunity cost of um, investing in like the whole capital structure. So it's referring to both debt and equity. And that's important to keep in mind as we go through it. All right, so now that you understand a little more about the weighted average cost of capital, I want you guys to be able to think about why we use it and what we use it for. So remember last week when we valued companies using the discounted cash flow analysis, and I was just giving you guys the discount rate to use? Well, in real life, no one gives you a discount rate. You have to actually derive that from somewhere. And this discount rate is actually called the weighted average cost of capital. How convenient. All right, so now that you guys know a little bit more about weighted average cost of capital, why we use it, I wanna ask you guys a simple question just to test your understanding. All right, so if a company's returns are greater than its weighted average cost of capital, is the company losing value or creating value? Great, so the company in that scenario would actually be creating value. So let's say the company's returns are about 10% and the weighted average cost of capital is 6%. The company is actually getting four cents for every dollar it invests. All right, so start thinking about it like that. Okay, great, so now let's go into the formula and actually how to calculate the WAC. All right, so the weighted average cost of capital is going to equal the cost of equity times the proportion of equity um, over the total capital in the business plus the after-tax cost of debt times the proportion of debt over the total amount of capital plus, and there are other ways to finance your business, not just debt and equity, sometimes it's like preferred stock, so you have to take that into account, plus like the cost of preferred stock times the proportion of preferred stock over the total capital. Okay, so this might look long and involved and confusing, it's actually very easy to calculate. It's just you know addition, multiplication, very easy stuff. However, the inputs are kind of hard to derive. So we're going to break those inputs down a little bit more. So you basically have two process steps that you need to keep in mind. Figuring out the cost of capital and then figuring out the capital structure of the business. Okay, and this is harder than it looks. So when you're figuring out the cost of capital, first you need to figure out debt capital and equity capital. So debt capital is a little more straightforward, so we're going to start with that. So when we figure out the cost of debt, we're going to look towards some things. It's not, you know, it's not a science, it's an art kind of. Um, we're going to look at the company's yield to maturity on its long-term bonds. Or we're going to pick a company with a similar credit rating and similar company profile and figure out what their cost of debt would be and then use that as a proxy. So we can use a couple different methods. Um, then we're going to multiply it by one minus the corporate tax rate because as we spoke about last week, we need to take it into account, you know, that interest tax shield. So the fact that interest is actually tax deductible. Um, so that's where the after tax portion comes in. Great. So next we're going to look a little bit about, uh, we're going to look at the equity capital. So we've touched upon in the past weeks the capital asset pricing model. 
And this is essentially how we derive the cost of equity. So the cost of equity, just to refresh your memories, is equal to the risk-free rate plus some um, like equity risk premium. So the extra return that you would need for bearing more risk. Um, this formula is driven a lot by beta. Um, beta is the systematic risk of the company. And we're going to have to talk about that at the later session because that would take a whole lecture in and of itself. Um, but it's important that you just understand these two concepts right now. Great. Next, we're going to look at the capital structure. So in looking at the capital structure, we're going to first want to figure out the market value of equity. So it's important that we figure out the market value, not the book value of equity, since those two really differ, and investors are going to care about markets, what the markets are saying, not what your books are saying. So we're going to look at the price per share times the number of shares outstanding. That's how you derive the market value. Next, we're going to look at the book value of debt. So book value of debt and market value of debt are actually very similar. So the book value is a pretty good proxy for it. Um, it's also easier to understand and kind of calculate. So for our purposes, we're going to calculate the book value of debt. And we're going to do that by adding up all of the debt on the balance sheet. Um, next, if you had something like preferred stock, you'd have to take that into account as well. So don't forget that. Um, and basically, the capital structure is how you get these proportions that I was talking about earlier. OK, great. So. We've just, you know, did a brief overview of the weighted average cost of capital. In the afternoon, we're going to come back. We're actually going to derive the weighted average cost of capital ourselves and use that when, when valuing companies. Use that as the discount rate instead of the ones I gave you. So have a great lunch. Come back ready to do some more valuation with weighted average cost of capital. And make sure to ask me any questions if you have them. Thanks.